the tape, and you can see that Whitaker is younger, a half inch taller, has five inches more reach than Nelson. They are comparable in size, but where there are edges, they belong to Pernell Whitaker. And here is our punch stat numbers to give you a profile of how active these fighters are. In the compilation of their last three fights, as you can see, Whitaker threw about 10 more punches around and landed more punches than Nelson, but that's because he throws more jabs, and we'll show you those numbers, and here you can see them. Whitaker depends on the jabs. Nelson... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Caesars Palace Sports Pavilion, where tonight main events monitor Dan Duba President and Don King Productions, in association with Caesars Palace, presents World Championship Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dr. James Nave, Chairman. The commissioners at ringside are Dwayne Ford, Dr. Elias Gunham, Jay Nady, and Luther Mack. The executive director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission is Chuck Minker. Representing the International Boxing Federation at ringside is Mr. Bob Lee, the president of that organization from New Jersey, and the supervisor at ringside, Mr. Al Goodman of Florida. Representing the WBC at ringside, Jose Suleiman of Mexico City, its president, and its supervisor, Roy Van Putten of the island of Aruba. The officials assigned by the governing bodies for the next bout of the evening. The judges will be Dolby Shirley of Las Vegas, Nevada, Harry Gibbs of England, and Sid Nathan of England. The timekeeper is Jane Broadfoot. Counting at the knockdowns, Mike Morabito. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Flip Lomansky and William Berliner. And your referee is Mills Lane. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF WBC Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the red corner, fighting out of Accra, Ghana, weighing in at 134 pounds, with a professional record of 32 wins, one defeat with 24 KOs. He is the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Azuma, the warrior, Nelson. And in the blue corner, from Norfolk, Virginia, weighing an even 135 pounds. His professional record consists of 21 wins, one defeat, with 12 KOs. He is the IBF, WBC, lightweight champion of the world, Burnell, Sweet Pea, Whitaker. All right, now look, if he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low, okay? okay? Now, protect yourself at all times. You've already had your instructions in the dressing room. Any questions from the challenger, she's second. Okay. Any questions from the champion, she's second. Let's get it on. Come on. All right. Jim and Ray, fighters in the smaller divisions often lose it in their late 20s because quickness is so important to them. So I think the main question here is how much of his old quickness has Nelson been able to summon, to stay up to and to try to catch this wraith in front of him. Cornell Whitaker, unquestionably one of the quickest fighters in the sport. Mills Lane, in his 41st professional fight, wants it to start exactly right. Both fighters looked happy and comfortable in the minutes leading up to their pre-fight instructions from referee Mills Lane. These are two proven stars of the sport, no strangers to the spotlight. Whitaker begins with three straight jabs, and Nelson goes to the body. What's going to give uh, Nelson the speed, because at a certain age, you do lose a little speed or what have you. But I think it depends on how much you want to win. And Azuma Nelson, he wants to win this fight so, so bad. He wants to do it for his people. yesterday he fully expected to have to stalk Whitaker around the ring and he said he would have no compunction about chasing the slightly bigger Whitaker and that's what it took. Now you see what uh, 
what Jimmy Nelson's doing. He's actually trying to walk down Purnell. Down for his punches because he feels that Purnell cannot hurt him. There's the dip I was telling you about earlier with Azuma Nelson. As he gets inside, he takes a dip. He goes under the punches of Purnell Whitaker. Wayne Peralta likes to dip his head low. There's a chance for an accidental bunt here tonight. Two fighters who will go down when they're in close. Whitaker establishing the jab. with the Jimmy Nelson, he's always had problems with South Paul, and the key is to keep your left foot outside his right foot. Because a lot of times you throw punches, you off down. So the key for Jimmy Nelson is keep that left foot on the outside of Hunter Whitaker's right foot. You saw Whitaker, who often likes to showboat, patting Nelson on the butt after he had turned the super featherweight champ around. Nelson has been regarded sometimes in the past as a headhunter, but he appears conscious of wanting to go to the body as he comes inside here. Yesterday, talking with Cornell, that him and Lou Duke, they stated the fact that he's not going to run anymore. He's just going to get angles. And this is what he's doing now. He caught Azuma with a pretty good left hand there because he's giving angles side to side, lateral movement. Whenever Nelson releases the right, Brunel is trying to come back over the top with the left hand, and he's been effective with it so far. Those are the counter punches that I spoke of earlier, Jim. He makes Azuma Nelson reset each in a counter with him. all the difference in this fight, speed. If Cornell can keep this kind of, kind of tempo up, he can make an easy fight out of this. So far, he's been able to stick and step away, stick and step away. Good round for Cornell Whitaker. I didn't see where you're in the tap of the world, baby. Listen, just keep doing just what you're doing, John. You understand? Just keep him looking for you. Now listen, relax. Now you got him covered. You understand? Now he's swinging at you. Now you, how you feel about it? I feel good. Okay. Now you got him covered. Now look. This is as good as this guy's gonna get. You know why? Because of what you're doing, George. Now don't change. Okay. You know when you get close, grab him up, walk. You know what I mean? Let's go inside. Couple of combination. Inside, inside, inside and that was an impressive round for Whitaker because it showed his evolution from a fighter who used to fight with his legs just running and stabbing to now using his quickness to get into punching position not just bicycling around well now he realized that he could hit a man without moving so far back so he moved far back he was not in a position to hit the man or counter him Nelson told us that he would not throw the jab much in this fight, an admission that he's not particularly interested in trying to box for Whitaker. He wants to make him fight. In the first round, Nelson only threw four jabs, but Whitaker threw 45 of them. This is not really a good tactical for Nelson because in walking in with this type of style, he's going to be subjecting himself to a lot of punches. You must appreciate the hand speed of Colonel Whitaker. Every time a Nelson comes in to block shots, he's also losing points. Nelson manages to land a combination along the ropes as he tries to pick up the tempo. Whitaker comes back with a straight jab and the left of the rip kick. happened in the corner. Turn with her at the spin with every spin of Zuma. He threw a short shot to the midsection and it kind of bothered Azuma. He also grabbed Nelson's thigh and tried to lift it up. Was he's trying to annoy him? He's trying to overpower him and frustrate him too. Guy that can block is 
up and up. When we fight a southpaw who does everything to the opposite side, it's very difficult, especially if he's a good boxer with good lateral movement. Like Michael Nunn, it's tough to beat a fighter guy like Michael Nunn because of his movement. Nelson had some trouble in the early rounds with a southpaw named Lupe Suarez. A tough time, gentlemen. As a matter of fact, he's having a tough time here against Parnell. to Nelson's face after he had locked his head under his arm. The crowd responded with warm humor. On the outside of the hand speed and the box of talent, the movement, look at the speed of the spinner man around. Nelson missed with the left hook. Let's take a look at that unusual punch. <laughs> I don't know if Whitaker will qualify for prime time, but a few more of those uh, backhands and he may qualify for Wimbledon. <laughs> Incidentally, most of the instructions in Whitaker's corner are being delivered not by Lou Duba, but by George Benton, who is the great guru of defense for most of Duba's fighters. What's making this tough for Zoom Nelson also is the fact that he noticed Colonel Whitaker goes way down too. That was a good right hand, pretty good right hand by uh, Zoom Nelson. But what I was saying, saying early, Colonel gets down low too. It makes it tough. To land a punch. With the arms crossed and crouching over as he comes in, Nelson offers an interesting reminder of a heavyweight fighter, Ken Norton, used to assume that crab like pop was coming in. Well, actually, this is the same hey, hey, tactic hey, hey, that George Foreman used against Jerry Cooney with those hands crossed. But what happens is it takes another second or so to, to throw a combination. Ray, do you think this is a sign of early desperation that he's unable to get to Whitaker and he's trying anything he can to try to bully him? Well, first of all, if someone else has problems with shot balls anyway, and because of the hand and foot speed of, of Colonel Whitaker, this is very frustrating trying to cope with this kind of style. Whitaker landing solidly with counter punches as Nelson opens up a little more, releasing his hands more to try to get in. And Nelson takes advantage of a chance to hit Whitaker while he's down on his knees. That's Azuma Nelson's best chance to turn this into a street brawl. Get inside, make Cornell fight him. Just fight him. And I hope he lands a big punch. And that's he landed a right down. hand there. Nelson is starting to get a little bit more effective inside. And he's going less to the body and more to the head now. Well, Cornell is not hurting him, and he understands that he, he feels that he can out, he can hurt Cornell Whitaker. You've seen how slick Whitaker can be. Now you're starting to see how tough Nelson is. Nelson says, come on. Keep throwing that jab at me. I'll take that all night. Whitaker obliged. Well, yesterday we talked to uh, Azuma about taking jabs. He said, I'll take a jab and get inside and throw my punches. So these jabs apparently are not bothering him. But they're scoring points. They'll show up on the scorecard. But when it was suggested to Azuma that he'd take a lot of jabs, he just smiled and said, don't worry. Okay. Now 
Let's go, man. Don't worry, Don't worry man. Let's go. Okay. Don't worry. 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 Because he's swinging. Yeah, see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look. Yeah, yeah. See, even though you're moving, you're still where he's at. Yeah. Got an ace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're still right there. So what just take your time. Take it. Let him fire. Let him fire. What do you fire? Make it move. Make it move. And then cut him up around where else. Let's take a look at Whitaker. That left. The right didn't land, but the left landed flush. Already in the corner, Ray. They were using an end swell on the right eye of Whitaker, which means he's catching too many of those jabs, and it could tell later in the fight. And his main hope, the way he's fighting here, is to try to wear Whitaker down and come on in the second half of the fight. Are you saying they were using the end swell on Nelson? I'm sorry, I, uh, on Nelson. Yes. Thank you. He's the man who's been taking a lot of jabs, as you saw from the punch count statistics. Azuma Nelson only threw 17 jabs in the first three rounds, and Whitaker threw nearly 150 of them. I think Azuma Nelson's trying to uh, wait for a punter to wear himself out, or slow down, rather. But his corner, his corner, Azuma Nelson's corner, don't agree with that. They want him to throw more punches, get inside, and be a little more effective. Actually, the left hook and the right hand. Because it comes from the blind side. And the left hook is probably Nelson's best punch anyway. But as he, you know, Jimmy has worked his way in because in, what he's doing now, he's actually on receiving him because he's, he's walking straight to his man. He needs to take that dip. Of the sport, eating the jab to get inside. Again, again. Whitaker splitting Nelson's defense with the jab. You have a pretty good picture of this right now. What's happening with Azuma Nelson? He's actually following this man around. He's not cutting the ring off, he's following him around the ring. All right, okay. Both of you guys, watch your head. Now you're going to get a butt. Come on. Whitaker chopping away. This is the most dominant round so far. Now once again, you notice that Azuma's just walking. It's pretty much a dance. He's just following his man around the ring. It's a losing strategy unless he can find a way to hurt Cornell. He believed before the fight that he could. What's going to happen? Cornell would have been forcing pretty good body shots here. And you should see a great deal of change in Azuma Nelson. Whitaker opting to lead with the left, and he lands with that also. The jabs are still going straight up the middle and splitting the defense. Great round for Cornell Whitaker. When you get close to it, don't grab it. See the close guy. Swing it. You don't have to grab it. Right. Now listen. Listen to me. Now look, I want you to be calm. Settle down. You know what I'm saying? The guy is just swinging at you. All you got to do is just duck the point, just catch the point. But try to duck him. Don't catch too many. Okay. And just take your time. Now he carries you a little too fast that round. Don't let him put you in play. You understand? Just take steps. Because he's just swinging at you. You can stand right there and let him swing. Okay, Harold, how do you score the you fight so far? Larry, I've got it 4 to nothing, 40 to 36 in favor of Pernell Whitaker. I think that he just kept getting through the curb like defense of Azuma Nelson, uh, constantly with that right chair, pecking away, pecking away, and pecking away. Who is all Pernell Whitaker so far in the first four rounds with the jab and the left uppercuts? So far, the fight hasn't been competitive. And yet, in an odd way, it's it's there is passion in it because it's so clear 
that Azuma Nelson is trying hard. He's trying to get at him. He's not conceding. He feels that if he continues, sooner or later he'll catch him. And of course, you have to believe there's no quit in Azuma Nelson. You wonder how much of this it will take to discourage him, though. What you don't notice this round in front of Whitaker, he won't move as much, yet he'll slip and throw more combinations. Side to side, do a lot of spinning. Get on the opposite end of his man. This guy can't hit him. A lot of upper body movement. Well, you heard George Benton telling in between rounds, he's just swinging at you. You can stand and let him swing at you. Don't walk away so much. And don't catch his minute because it'll wear you down eventually. Now this is pretty much where Cornell Whitaker would want good right hand by Zoma Nelson. This is pretty much where Cornell Whitaker wants Zoma Nelson. Because so Zoma Nelson is starting to reach in now. Body shots by Cornell Whitaker. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. Every time Nelson stalks in resolutely to try to pursue the attack, Whitaker stings him with two or three tags. program for the Whitaker is with weight and uh, I really can't tell if he's making that much of a difference because he's yet to land a big punch on Azuma Nelson to make Azuma Nelson buckle. Azuma Nelson has a pretty good chance too so it, that may be the reason. Nelson has been down only against Salvador Sanchez in his entire career. 33 fights. Whitaker was knocked down by Rafael Williams early in his career and then later by Roger Mayweather when Mayweather was infuriated after Whitaker pulled his shorts down. Mayweather's a big puncher. You don't have to be embarrassed by going down against him. Listen, man. You don't move around like this, okay? Fight! Motherfucking fight! Okay? You don't fight now. Only like sound like stupid. You, you, you understand the time more intelligent like, like this man. What happened with you, man? So, so I need this one. I got a copy, Asoma. You wait all that you like for this time, okay? No message this time, Asoma. Why? This man come down, you sit down too. Listen to me. Give me the water. Listen to me. Why? You don't got a blow, man? Let's go. The man sit down, you sit down too. The man put you full price. Let's go. It's a fucking... This go down, man. You're the champion. Let's go. You know, sometimes this work is a negative go, to a fight. You hear this kind of stuff. I mean, sometimes it's a positive, but this time I believe it's a negative because you saw the expression on Zuma Nelson's face. And as Larry made the point around to go, it's not as if he isn't trying. But at least he knows what his trainer thinks about what's going on. No secrets. <laughs> it's one of those no secrets relationships. <laughs> that was Jose Buffalo Martin. For a time in his career, trained Julio Cesar Chavez. He's had his hands on two of the greatest in the sport. Left and a right, solid from Whitaker. Following up. Very little that Nelson can do against that kind of hand speed and instinct. And again, it becomes a negative from this point of uh, instructions and demands. The fact that he gets a little too careless with some Nelson. Body shot from Nelson. Slowed Whitaker for just a second. Grinnell comes back with body shots of his own. See, this happens all the time with the stop call. You can't maintain your balance. 
tough to maintain your balance because the guy's doing everything from the other side. Now all Cornell needs to do is step to the side and drop a, drop a left hand. Pivot to the left side, drop a left hand. fight, which reminds me, gentlemen, of a story that uh, Whitaker told us yesterday that when he went to college at Norfolk State for a semester, he <laughs> took a course in accounting. And after the mid-semester exam, which he got a C, he quit the, he quit the course. He thought, the, he, co he thought it was all over. <laughs> cut it short. But right here, he knows he's only midway through the 12th round. <laughs> Even if it wasn't true, it's the way a lot of us felt about accounting, right? He <laughs> wouldn't be good enough for me. Right, he figured out, he found a profession where someone else could do his taxes. Well, someone else is coming on now. Nelson landed a left hand that backed Whitaker up. This may be all he needed to get, get into the fight. Good right hand. So Zuma's turns into a street fight, which he should have been doing earlier. Whitaker again grabs Nelson under the thigh. Mills Lane has told him he doesn't like that. See how much energy for this renewed assault Nelson has. Big by hands, but he's starting to find his target. 
direction of the bout has changed slightly. And it's worth noting that Cornell Whitaker has never knocked anyone out beyond round six. Newman Elson has worn down several opponents and knocked them out in the later round. This is an incredible pace here. Now, this is more so in the, in the uh, favor of Zuma Nelson. Because now he can land his big shots. Chopping away. And now Whitaker dropping his hands a bit inside and giving Nelson a chance to land the left hook. The reason that Azuma, I mean, uh, Pernell Whitaker is tying his man up is to get a breather here. round of the fight by far for Azuma and, Nelson. And you have to love Azuma Nelson for the way, for the effort he's giving us and giving himself. And incidentally, gentlemen, we want to remind our viewers that World Championship Boxing continues next month on HBO with a heavyweight doubleheader. Mike Tyson making his return to the ring after his shocking loss to Buster Douglas will face Henry Tillman, who twice defeated Tyson when they were amateurs. Also fighting George Foreman, since coming out of retirement, he's won 21 fights and lost none. His opponent, Jose Adelson Rodriguez, probably the toughest number on Foreman's dance card since his return to the ring. So be sure to join us June 16th for a live doubleheader featuring two of the biggest names in boxing today, Mike Tyson and George Foreman. That'll be right here in Los Angeles. All right, let's take a look at those big punches landed in this round. The first one by Nelson, there it is. A right time, followed by a left time, time. drove Whitaker back, All right, let me go. All right, but let me he go. was well within himself. Nils Lane giving Whitaker a little extra time to get out of his corner as round eight begins. And Nelson picks up where he left off in round seven. that Azuma Nelson picked the tempo of the fight up, which he should have been doing in the earlier rounds because that would have made the difference by now. He would have seen some results, but it's kind of a little too late. Although if he's able to land a big punch and turn the table, something might happen. Because he's fighting inside more, Azuma Nelson, he's landing more shots. He runs the risk of taking even more, but what does it matter? He's proven that he's going to take punishment, whether outside or inside. He would take more shots on the outside, like he just took a left hand there, as opposed to being inside. Inside, he has a better chance because he, is, he appears to be a little stronger and carries a better punch than Pernell Whitaker. Inside, he has a chance to initiate the action. Outside, he's always being beaten to the punch. Exactly, because of the, on the inside, he has a chance of being able to counter one of Trina Whitaker's by right hand there. Good right hand by Azuma Nelson. Whitaker still snapping Nelson back with the jab. There's a little mouse under the left eye now of Pernell Whitaker. Probably from one of those right hands. I guess you notice that the style of a zoom has changed. As opposed to his arms being crossed, he now puts both hands in front of him. The style of fight has changed since the earlier round. More the conventional way. That's some beautiful movement by Pernod Whitaker when he gets out of the corner. All he, do, all he does is pivot. Whitaker's 
starting to assert himself again now within the last 20 seconds. I thought that was Whitaker's most impressive round because he took some punches as he had in the previous round and yet he still fired. Be careful because you're throwing too many punches at him, right? Settle down. Let him carry through fast now. Yeah. Inhale, baby. Inhale. Sometimes if he, if he charges you to fall right on his chest, you know what I mean? Like when, when you're going back, when he's up to you, fall right up on his chest. Okay. But when you fall, open up. Bang, bang, bang. So he can't take off. So it ain't got to be hard. Just busy. Right? All right, now you're winning like a son. Sam, now it's time for what? What am I? No one, I'm no one. Harold Letterman, Tom, it's time for what? Your scorecard. Larry, I've got an 80 to 72, eight rounds to nothing in favor of Colonel Whitaker. I think that the closest the Zoom even came to winning a round was possibly the seventh where he tried to rush Colonel, but Pete keeps picking him off with the right hand. Every time his Zoom rushes in, Pete nails him with a right jab and a straight left. Well, I disagree with you, uh, Harold, to this extent. I gave Nelson the seventh round. His trainer in, in the corner in that round said, now let's go to war. I don't know what he's been trying to do up to now, but maybe there's a higher level. Well, sometimes the change in language elicits a different response. I don't know what Nelson can do other than what he's been trying. He's just faced with the prospect of fighting somebody who's a little bit rangier, considerably quicker and is going to beat him to the punch most of the time. Jabs that Colonel would have been throwing. So he's put on a clinic in that area. Oh, he's really doing a number on his own else with the jab. Good right hand by Whitaker, followed by a right hand by Nelson. He comes back with a right of his own. The thing about speed, you must understand, it nullifies power, spread everything. It just totally nullifies it. Why? Because you get your punches in so quick, you break the rhythm of, your, of the opponent, and it frustrates him. And this is what's on the face of a Zuma Nelson, frustration. He can't get set. He can't get his balance. Colonel Whitaker keeps turning, keeps giving him angles, throws combinations, ties his man up. He's doing everything right. A good fight for Colonel Excellent, I must say. incidentally will not lose his super featherweight championship even should he lose this bout he has the option of going back down to 130 pounds and fighting the winner this is the kind of type of fight that Colonel would have believed the public wants to see a tactical fight scientific fight give him a show he feels that like he's an entertainer about between Jeff Bennett and Juan Laporte to retain his title. It would be a lot easier for Azuma Nelson because these guys, he has to be nowhere near that of Colonel Whitaker. Yeah, this was a tough assignment to move up and wait against a faster fighter than just about anybody in your division. Look at the jail. Let's go knock out, you got a big round. Sound for, for good. Sam, what the fuck is with you? You're not punching. This man with this fight like another fight. Sam, please, please. Sam, you know nothing. You, you free. What, what the heck happened with you, man? I was not the guy out. Nine minutes is too long. I'm not supposed to outside. Because the guy's swinging, I'll hit you with that. Okay. Only on the inside, right? Okay. Now you're doing a damn good job. Okay. Keep that left hand going, right? Okay. All right. Now up and down. Hey, okay. the wild swings come up and down, up and down. Don't have your back to the ropes. There's no tag. Five minutes in. Five minutes in. Come on. Come on. Get that. 
Nelson's trainer asked him what the hell happened to him. And we all know the answer. Everybody in this building does. Cornell Whitaker happened to him. Cornell Whitaker and the nearly 50 jabs per round, or in fact a little over 50 jabs per round, of which he's landing close to half of them. That's the way he fights. Those were his punch stat numbers coming into the bout. What's giving Nelson problems the fact that Colonel Whitaker has those great legs. Good bouncing. A lot of life to him. He's one Cornell Whitaker is one of the few guys, fighters rather, that can punch a guy other than Camacho and get behind you. possible exception of punching power. That may come as they continue to develop and he continue to fight. And again, with the weight program, they can make a difference. But it's something that will take place down the road. It's just like with uh, Holyfield, Evander Holyfield on the weight program. He's a lot stronger, but I never thought Evander was this week anyway. Of course, strength doesn't always translate to punching power anyway. It does not. It, uh, it, it builds endurance and what have you. It depends on what kind of program you're on. Power is a mystical thing that has something to do with leverage and timing and a few other things that not even all fighters understand. It's like speed. You don't build speed. You make you create accuracy. You don't actually build power. You build strength, but you don't build the power. That's technique. Leg man. I can tell. Yes, he's been a leg man all night long. It's a big giveaway. <laughs> Trading punches at close quarters. One of the few times in the round that Nelson has been able to find for an L. Whitaker. Whitaker's just been too elusive for him. And now as round 10 comes to a close, we're going to take a look back at something significant in the heavyweight division that took place on the undercard here. Just about an hour and a half ago, the veteran Greg Page out of Louisville, Kentucky, had a chance to continue his comeback to prominence in the heavyweight division, headed toward an apparent probable fight somewhere along the way with Mike Tyson. But the apple cart was upset by a journeyman from Los Angeles named Mark Will, who pounded Page with wild punches through most of the fight, until here in round six, he landed a couple of roundhouse right hands that set up that. And after that, referee Carlos Padilla stopped the fight, even though Page was able to get up before the count of nine. And we presume, Larry Merchant, that Larry Merchant, that that means Greg Page probably won't have a date with Mike Tyson at any time in the future. Well, there's another opinion about that. Some people think that uh, now Mike Tyson will be only too happy to fight Greg Page. That somehow he qualified for a challenge after that knock, being knocked out. It's interesting. After his record in recent years, that in Tyson's proposed comeback that they wouldn't hear of getting in the ring with Page because uh, Page apparently handled him fairly well in sparring in Tokyo before the Douglas fight. And the big question at ringside after this debacle this evening is how could he have looked good against Tyson in Tyson's training and looked so bad here? Well, maybe it says as much about Mike Tyson as it does about Greg Payne. You saw, incidentally, at the end of that tape replay, the face of James Buster Douglas, the undisputed heavyweight champ, who is here watching at ringside himself. And now we return to round 11 of live action between Whitaker and Azuma Nelson, and Mills Lane wants to talk.
side by Nelson, and Whitaker seemed to jump backward for a second. Again, Whitaker reaches for Nelson's leg, and Nelson responds with a left hook. Mills Lane, district attorney from Reno, Nevada, doing a little litigation inside. There are signs of desperation in someone else. One or two things could happen here, Jim. In fact, he could land a big punch, or either he could be knocked down because he's just walking in, walking in. And he's missing a lot of big punches, as Zuma Nelson is. And when you miss those kind of punches, it takes so much from you. He landed a big punch there. I don't know what that seriously hurt Cornell, Cornell, but he got his attention at least. It was high up on Cornell's head on the temple. And now Nelson simply wrestles into the canvas. We're talking about the physical strength. No question about it. Azuma Nelson is a lot stronger, but the technique of Clinton Whitaker is a lot better. Good left. Solid left hand from Whitaker. Incidentally, should you have any doubt whatsoever, Whitaker's slip to the canvas was not scored a knockdown. That was, of course, a slip. Nelson still throwing wildly inside, and he's landing some of it. This is like 11 rounds too, too late. He's way too long to get his attack off. of Azuma Nelson's last two title defenses ended in 12th round knockout. But in neither of those fights had he been dominated the way he's been dominated here. My guy, make him move, make him pay. You understand? Now listen, do your little counter with him when he finds that old crazy ass right in there. You understand? Bang, right back. Beat him, beat him on outside now. You understand? Fight. We don't want this fight. Don't keep winning the fight. But don't get fancy. Time is time. Time is broke down. Come on. When he gets inside, he's starting trying to go crazy. Let him throw you down. That's, let him throw you down. That's that's uh, eating the clock up. You understand? Three minutes. Tiger, let's go, Tiger. Let's go, Tiger. Harold, there you have it going into the last Larry, round. 10 rounds to 1, 109 to 100, favor of Colonel Whitaker. He uh, won in every round except for the 11th round where Nelson rushed right. him up a little bit. But I was to Colonel Whitaker. I have it 9 rounds to 3. 8 rounds to 3, sorry. Uh, maybe I'm anticipating what's going to happen here. In the, in the club. It's an interesting fight. It doesn't have any great drama to it. But as I said before, it does have some passion. And Whitaker is putting on a really good show. And Azuma Nelson continues to stalk to try to get the big comeback knockout in the 12th. He landed a right hand. And he's landing with increasing frequency. I see one thing about Puno, he's, he's starting to be close to what he wants to knock out. In fact, he's trying it right here. He should stay on the outside. Of course, his stablemate, Pernell, or Meldrick Taylor, caught a lot of flack in the boxing press for failing to stay away from Julio Cesar Chavez in the 12th round of a fight that he had apparently won on the scorecard. And he wound up on his back at 2.58 of the round. You can see what is is trying to do. What punch he's trying to land. He's cocking that right hand back. He's telegraphing it. He's trying to get so much leverage behind it. But Cornell Whitaker has not cooperated. Solid right hand landed to the face of Whitaker by Nelson. But Cornell apparently able to take it. Comes back with a left hand lead of his own. And he's still taking those little shots. And again, as someone else is trying to land up big punch. You can see the fatigue has set it because this is an incredible pace for both fighters. But also, 
Akuma Nelson is strong on the two. Teague isn't going to stop Nelson's desperate charge, nor will it stop Whitaker from continuing to lift his right leg. The reason that Parnell's doing what he's doing is try to get a breather. And I believe that, that referee Mills Lane took a point away from Whitaker on that. I'm he not did sure. Indeed. He took a point from Whitaker. He's trying to run that clock down. Parnell Whitaker is. That's all he has to do right now. Use those legs. Use that ring. Hands up. He must keep those hands up. It was just about at this point that Taylor got in trouble against Chavez. Not going to happen here. Fighters push themselves to their limits. Whitaker has a much wider limit right now than does Nelson. Well, we mentioned before the fight that Brunel Whitaker was the slightly larger, considerably younger, and unquestionably quicker man. And certainly, he took advantage of the quickness throughout the fight, using his hand speed, his exceptional footwork, and his boxing skills to land consistently with the jab, set up other punches off the jab, to, for the most part, beat Nelson to the punch, and contribute to increasing frustration on Azuma Nelson's part that led, ultimately, to him swinging wildly and hoping for a knockout in the 11th and 12th round. It was all in all a pretty impressive right exhibition right for the world lightweight champion, right? It really wasn't the age that made the factor. I think it was the, the style, the techniques that uh, Pernet Whitaker was able to execute. Harold Letterman, your final scorecard for the 12 round championship fight. Larry, uh, Jim, I, I had it 117 to 110, 10 rounds to two, decisively for Pernell Whitaker. We do have two British judges here tonight, and I'll say this much, if I had a general, as I would say British judges do like finesse fighters, uh, this was a beautiful finesse job by Pernell Whitaker. No doubt that Pernell should win this fight. And of course you saw the eight point round in the 12th on Harold's card, reflective of the fact that one point was taken away from Whitaker. And now we go to Chuck Hall for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Harry Gibbs scores about 116, 114. Judge Dolby Shirley scores about 116, 111. And Judge Sid Mason scores about 115, 113 for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, the WBC IBF lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweetie Whitaker. One hundred sixteen to one hundred fourteen, and one hundred fifteen to one hundred thirteen. That's a lot closer than I think uh, several of us at ringside would have expected it to be. Right, Ray? It was much more of a dominant fight. The way I saw it. Final punch cat statistics. Whitaker throwing more than 200 more punches, in fact, 250 more punches, landing at just about twice the percentage of Nelson. And, of course, a lot of that was the tremendous effectiveness of the right jab, the southpaw, Pernell Whitaker. Larry Merchant is with the champion right now. Okay, Sweet Pea, how hard was this fight for you? Because this guy came after you for 12 rounds. Well, Larry, that's, that's the name of the game. I know we're being a world champion. Now, you know, take 